I'm glad you joined us here for a full review of the Audi Q3 Sportback. Is it just a cutoff Q3 or what is it? Here on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. With Thomas, we're going to take you on a tour on the exterior. Interior and today a very fun driving experience here in the Black Forest. It will be really amazing, I can promise you. Please subscribe if you haven't done so far. And now join us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the front, Q3 and Q3 Sportback are somewhat similar indeed with this huge front grille, but very, you know, big stands on the road. Here the S-Line package with a lot of sporty contrast, lower part and also those silver contrast right there. So beautiful job, I think. And also has those special bright accentuations inside the honeycomb structure of the front grille. Turbo blue, yes, great color here for the day. A real Thomas blue, a bright strong blue, as we call it here on Autogefühl. Then those headlamps, they come LED as standard. Different trims are available. The second trim already offers those turning indicators, which are in this cascading style. And those ones here are the optional, optional matrix LED. Other than that, you see here the front accentuations right there. So S-Line package, as I said, Overall, a very, very sporty stance already for a small SUV. 4 meters 50, 14 foot 8 or 177 inches is the length of the Q3 Sportback. That's 2 centimeters longer than the normal Q3, which, you know, continues li uh, like that. But that's just, you know, overhang from the spoilers. But it looks a little bit longer because it's a little bit flatter. So about 3 centimeters flatter here in this whole roof line. And of course, it's falling down right there even more like all those SUV coupes as they are called. 17 to maximum 20 inch wheels. Those are ones are the biggest 20 inch wheels. Then with those contrasting wheel arches but there's not black plastic. You can see it's also painted then in black. Very interesting. S-line batch. Then wow this turbo blue color looks amazing. And this one here also has a, this sporty stance right there. If you compare it to the normal... Uh, yeah, the mobile phone is still in the vehicle, the car says on the inside, because I closed the car here with the keyless entry. That way you open it again. So I think a very beautiful stance on the road here. I think it works quite well. It's not too dramatic. But then here those stronger shoulders, very interesting. And always some information about the suspension. You start with a sport suspension actually with the Q3 Sportback, but then you can opt in, just without extra price to the normal suspension, which we could recommend. Or if you can spend the money to the adaptive suspension, then you have a little bit more variety in comfort. We also have that today to test for you. I definitely wanted to show you the three quarter rear perspective. This is really impressive. And I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of SUV coupes or those cutoff SUVs, but I think in this case, it really works very well design wise. Or what's your take on that? Also with the S-Line, can sport here situations, especially right here with this diffuser style and very modern LED signature in the rear. And by the way, talking about braking, the autonomous emergency brake is standard equipment and then optional more assistance systems like the ACC, adaptive cruise control and also blind spot monitor and so on. We'll also test all the systems here today in the driving test. And the straight rear perspective for you, definitely this is design object. So the main reason to go for the Q3 Sportback and not for the normal Q3 is design. Yes, everyone knows there will be a little bit less space on the interior. How much? We will soon find out. And by the way, the 35 TSI, TFSI, 35, it stands for nothing. They just put those levels. Of course, higher numbers means more power and lower, lower, but it doesn't make any logical sense. And I'm always confused myself.
And here in our long format, we always like to show you different variations, different colors. Here, this one is called Myth Black or Mythos Schwarz. That would be <laughs> the one in German. And this here also together with this first edition that you also have the black Audi rings and the black accentuations overall, really a dark style. And especially here in this rear three quarter perspective, it looks really menacing here as the Q3 Sportback. This one also with 20 inch wheels, but in a different style. So what would be your pick as for the color? For me, of course, the turbo blue. And we also have two more colors in our studio episode, the orange one and the white car. So if you're even more interested in colors and trims, we will always link interesting other or fitting episodes in the video description and in the pinned comment. So if you're finished with this review here, also tune in to more. And this one here, by the way, is the 45 TFSI. So this is the strongest petrol engine so far, also with all-wheel drive. We will also compare this one to the smaller 1.5 liter petrol engine today here. So first the small petrol engine, later the bigger one. And what we can also see at the rear, this one is the first new Audi without any fake exhaust. You got this diffuser style here with the S-line, but there are no fake exhaust anymore. So. Big step forward and I think everyone here agrees that fake exhaust are not really you know, a good thing. So here, a rather clean design, I think. Thumbs up. All four cylinder engines here and front wheel drive for the smaller ones, all wheel drive for the bigger ones. Look at that one here. This one is the new 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine with 150 horsepower and a mild hybrid system. So coasting or sailing between 40 and 160 kilometers an hour, for example, and an electric boost, 10 seconds, 12 horsepower. Very interesting. Six-speed manual gearbox, front-wheel drive, or optional, the seven-speed DSG, the S-Tronic. Then there is a two liter turbo petrol engine with 190 horsepower or 230. Had the 230 one all with the Q3 review, check out that one. Always made it to a seven speed DCT or Astronic as they call it, and all wheel drive. And then the diesel, two liter, two horsepower specs, 150 or 190. And then also the first one with manual, and the other one then with the Astronic and also AWD or front wheel drive. Well, not too complicated this engine lineup, pretty clean this whole engine bay. Will this mild hybrid system work? I'm not sure, but we will test it. With the big turbo petrol engine, we had about 9 liters of fuel consumption with the Q3 now. That was too high. But this one here today? Hmm, let's see. This is the car key, nothing new there. Door closing sound. Ah, nice, as Brian would say. <laughs> Best greetings to our reporter, Brian. So here, let's say a little bit of soft touch. It's not super hard pack, but it's not, not soft as well. It's like something in between. <laughs> but this is nice, this reverse door handle. It's actually also quite practical. Then nice quality also from the window levers. And nice Alcantara inserts right there. Huge inner door pockets. This is very practical. Optional Bangers & Olufsen sound system. It's really worth it in this case. It's a great optional sound system. We really love the sound. S-Line entry badge in the lower part. Then here, of course, we also have the S-Line interior. Then soon more to all the digital instruments and so on. This one is a sporty steering wheel with a flat bottom. Then a lot of black piano lacquer is being used that they are not you know, my favorite, but hey, you know, can't be everything in my favorite. <laughs> also not those animal skin seats. They cost a lot of extra money and really warm in summer times and cold in winter times. But I can tell you, there are at least in Europe fabric seats available. 
both in normal form and then this one is the sport seat so two seat forms normal and sport seats and for both you can get it all in fabric and for this seats you could also get more alcantara it's a mix in of alcantara leatherette and some animal parts but this one here is the one with the most animal parts but Overall, Audi here in the Q3 and Q3 Sportback already reduced the amounts of animal skin parts. Recently seen also the Porsche Taycan review where they also have one animal free interior. So even if some people still criticize me for feeling with animals, sorry, it's coming. <laughs> so then you can put the steering in and out and up and down. And a nice cozy position here so it's not a super high suv but also not a somewhat more low crossover something in between one meters 86 or six foot one and without the panoramic roof you can get a lot of headroom right there so you can get a cozy seating position also as a tall driver this front part here is manually you know just longer or shorter and here also electric seats but again one problem is so many options so many extras configuring this car is pain in the uh yeah uh, and <laughs> the price always goes up by the way the sport bag here is about two and a half thousand euros more or more expensive than normal q3 it has some more extra uh, or like standard equipment than the other one but you know still it will be a little bit more expensive interior overview first of all a very clean layout and interesting here with the alcantara dash and addition audi logo yeah a lot of black piano like a here again you have to clean this all over the place definitely and the sporty steering wheel but could be a little bit smaller maybe right side for the volume control left side to control the digital instruments right there by the way if you see the check engine light that's always the case when the ignition is on it will uh, just fade out when you turn on the engine actually soft touch here at the top of the dashboard and then there will be different screen layouts available it starts here with 8.8 .8, a smaller one optional this 10.1 inch and on the left side always digital instruments but it starts with a 10.25 inch and then optional 12.3 inch hmm, come on why don't you just put this one and that's it two different sizes of digital instruments seriously hmm. yeah but soon more deals to this top setup here, this one here still has my favorite climate unit. Clicking sound and nice LED visualization and easy to control it while driving and the volume knob in the lower part. Drive select right here. Soon talking more about the drive modes. And lower part, you have an inductive charging pad. That's cool because you now also have wireless Apple CarPlay. Still also available with cable connection. For example, right side here, USB-C now and the classic USB both are available in the front. Then you have the automatic shifting lever. Below that, adaptive cup holders, they do a good job. And then there's this armrest, which is well attached and some more space underneath. So overall the offering of space in the interior in the front here is quite good. And those top virtual instruments, you can change the view, have the full GPS map or have more of your you know, driving data and so on. Then you can also have the music information right there or the consumption figure. And this one Alex, is the highest one with bending corners. It will be rather lower towards 6 liters or more kilometers if you really want to drive more efficient. So you can get to a 40s MPG region also with this engine. So virtual cockpit here, they are among the best in the segment, I think. So a really good job, crystal clear to read and they just look great and also flexible as what you want to show. This whole middle console area is, by the way, turned about 10 degrees to the driver. Then now deals with the infotainment system. This is the home menu, all we are touch, and there's just the touch control indeed. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth or here the Apple CarPlay. In this case, I've already connected it wirelessly and Android Auto is also available. And here, nice integration, they use all of the screen. And yeah, again, this sound system, the Bang & Olufsen sound system is um, really cool. Nice song, by the way. It has a very great 3D surround sound, so excellent for a small vehicle. Pretty cool. Then back to the MMI. Of course, we want to take a look at the GPS, which has a nice CPU, so fast enough. We've seen it nowadays already a little bit faster, yes, but I think also the visual character of it, 
you can very well see where you're heading to. And controlling it while driving is also, let's say, somewhat okay. Overall, I'm quite happy with the infotainment system. Everything is clear to read and the whole manual is also pretty easy. So quite intuitive where you find something also when you, for example, change display brightness or something like that. So everything, and, and also this um, feedback, by the way, you hear those clicking sounds, you can also turn it off or leave it on. And of course, you can also get a rear view camera right there with a very nice resolution. And there's also this fake drone view from above, including the front camera and also the side cameras here at the mirrors. So that's definitely a good option. And one of my favorite details is always a frameless top mirror. It's always just elegant and at the same time, it gives you a good view to the rear. So now to the rear door and well, in the front, there weren't too many differences. The rear, by the way, hard pick top part and Alcantara inserts here and reasonable door space also. And we have somewhat the same styling here in the rear. You can already see they have a little bit less leg room than in the normal Q3. The difference is that the rear bench can be moved front and the back 15 centimeters in normal Q3 and 13 centimeters right here. So again, you lose two centimeters of leg room. And that means that, I mean, it directly fits here with four tall adults. With the normal new Q3, it was, you know, like definitely more roomish. Yeah, maybe I could move the seat a little bit more forward. I could still drive like this or something. It's okay. You can still use this car very well. At the moment, the bench is all the way back, but you can also slide it forward like this in a two-third, one-third split. And it was also quite cool. Here you can marry the angle of the seat right there. So why can it be slid all the way back? Yeah, because of the falling roof line, because everyone would hit <laughs> the seating with the hat. And here at the moment like this, it's still okay. It directly fits. So yes, you can still use this car. It's no problem. But of course you lose, this is, you know, this is the space where you lose some of the practicability. But overall, the seating position in the rear is still decently comfortable. With those latches, by the way, you can also completely flip the seats from here. Push it back. Isofix is at the outside of those seats each. Then we have those cup holders, which also are somewhat adaptive in the middle part. And the ski hatch. Yes. There we go. Press this one here and then like this. And yeah, it gets a little bit <laughs> squeezed in right there. There's a middle tunnel and then you have some climate unit here, but Nothing to adjust that much. 12 volt power supply in the lower part and yeah, pretty dark in there now. Two more USB-C devices. Well, some disadvantages in the rear compartment, but what about the trunk? Well, first of all, the trunk leader capacity is 530 liters. That's identical to the one of the non-Sportback Q3. The reason is it's measured below this cover here and you lose the height above the cover. Yeah, so that only plays a role if you really stack it up all the way to the window, maybe for going on holiday with the whole family, then of course the normal Q3 is better and the full with flipped seats capacity, there you have a difference of 1400 to 1525 liter in the normal Q3, so that's the difference then. Got some luggage set up here for you, they can still see how it fits, but I can also put it out that you have a clear view then. Like this, there is this net available. You can also pull it out, but you can secure things underneath here. Then you have you now the sound system underneath, or if you don't have the sound system, you could also put a replacement tire if you like. And flipping seat is not possible from here. I soon do go all the way around. The normal length here is 93 centimeters, 94 centimeters, and the width about yeah, a little bit less than a meter actually. And Below this cover, you have a height of a little bit less than 40 centimeters. Well, and now I have to go around to use those latches. I could, by the way, also move the whole thing forward. So this one would be, you know, the maximum. And then you can see, you know, there's a gap then here. But when you need a little bit longer trunk at some point, other than that, when you flip the seats, of course, better leave it like this. Have to go all the way around to the other side. Yeah, that takes a while here in this vehicle. And then we can have the full flip like this. Yeah, I can push this one here a little bit further down. With electric seats, you don't have the possibility to flip the co-driver seat. 
So, and then, oh, so motorcyclists on the way now, beautiful roads. And then we got here, yes, thank you for the exhaust, thank you. <laughs> okay, now you can hear me again, or not. Come on, seriously? Yeah, about that. 1 meter 70, you have already seen it. <laughs> And interior variation for you, you can see the Alcantara can also be bought in blue. And I really love it, it looks so amazing. I'm just not sure yet, you know, in contrast to the whole black interior, hmm, I mean, you got it here as well and there on the top of the, uh, you know, this middle dashboard, so to say, and also at the other side. What do you think about it? So I love this blue Alcantara, but I'm not quite sure yet if it's really, you know, if it's too big of a contrast to the all black car. Maybe it would have been better if, you know, you got more gray elements. And we had so many questions in our initial static review. Does the Q3 Sportback also offer a panoramic roof? Yes, it does. This one here is a vehicle with one. You have this shade right there. It's a little bit shorter than in the Q3 SUV here in the Sportback. Here you can open it and it's not only a panoramic glass roof, you can also open it like this. So let's see how far does it open. Yeah. There we go, that's it. Again, it's shorter than in the Q3 SUV. And of course it reduces the head clearance all right in the front. Here with 1 meters 86 or 61, I still have some headroom left, yes, but it's definitely way less than if we would not have it. But how does it look like in the rear? Hmm, due to this falling roof line, it looks a little bit disturbing from the outside when the panoramic glass roof is opened, doesn't it? Hmm. And then the blue Alcantara is also at the inside of the rear doors. And now let's see if we get here in the rear. What about the head clearance? So, you see, it does end all the way right here, so indeed it doesn't make a big difference than in the rear headroom. It's again close, as in the other version, but, you know, yeah, you can surely do that. So it would be more of a problem if it would be continued all the way, but probably all the designers or engineers said, yeah, if we would continue that one all the way, first of all, it's too curved, this roof, and then it would not be possible to sit here in the rear with the head clearance, so, yeah. It's surely an option you can go for. Again, it looks really strange from the exterior then when it's open, but it might be a lot of fun to drive with it with open top. But always remind yourself, such a panoramic roof is also a, let's say, a weak part with the car, as we know, insulation, water, noises, rattling noises. I remember owning a car with a panoramic roof and, you know, after a while it got some rattling noises and then you have to you know, maybe apply some um, lubricants or something that the, that they work uh, again. Yeah, but on the other hand, I really enjoy open top driving, especially convertibles, and that's then sometimes a compromise when you cannot go for a convertible but still want some fresh air. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Audi Q3 Sportback here with the 1.5 liter TSI turbo petrol engine. 7-speed dual-clutch transmission, S-Tronic is their brand name for that. Alternatively, it would be a 6-speed manual gearbox. And since we are in those winding mountain corners here, we put the dynamic mode. Then the RPMs go a little bit higher. The car keeps in a rather lower gears. And we have a sportier driving fun. We have the adapter suspension here. Remember, the sport suspension would be standard for the Q3 Sportback, but you can easily opt for the normal suspension without any extra costs and then optional the adaptive suspension which is again adapting to the settings you have and also constantly adapting even inside those settings and this makes a wider span of comfort and sportiness at the same time so here in the sports mode we have a little bit more feedback from suspension that's good here because the roads are very well paved here at the moment so there are you know no comfort losses in this case then. Of course, you will lose some comfort then in the sports mode when there are some bumps in the road. And the big wheels here on the car, yeah, I mean, for sporty driving, they are quite cool now. But if you want more comfort, you would also go for smaller ones. And the car feels very well balanced also, uh, very well to control. So that's pretty cool. Now we go a little bit slower, so we go a little bit faster again. You see also I don't have to steer that much, so this steering is very progressive, as we say here. So the more you steer, 
the more input there is also and then you can keep both hands at the steering wheel all the time especially you know this progressive steering together with the adaptive suspension so now a little bit fast in acceleration this 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine is also enough as for the performance now we're going a little bit fast in the corner wow that feels very nice pretty cool Look at that, so how stable the car remains and we're still talking about the SUV segment here or at least crossover and this is giving me fantastic feedback, fantastic feeling from the steering and also the lane assist is not intervening. We recently had that for example in the Škoda Kamik, which is of course a little bit smaller but we had to deactivate the lane assist and when we were doing those winding corners but here actually it maybe realize what we're doing and so it's not intervening at all at the moment it's also deactivating itself partly and wow I almost feel like we are on the notch life I'm not you know exceeding any speed limit here but that feels fantastic and I would buy such a vehicle um, when I want more comfort more, more higher seating position and so on and that's the case here indeed with the car but at the same time Sometimes you lose driving fun and maybe like sporty driving fun with the SUVs, but here not at all. So we're in the Black Forest region here for you today, Schwarzwald, the famous German Schwarzwald. And actually the opposite side um, than we were in the, um, you know, in, the, in the area in France. So very interesting also um, geologically, because I look up the history like 65 million years ago. There was everything went down and there was erosion on both sides so it was almost 4,000 meters high and now today it's 1,000 meters because there was like millions of years of erosion pretty interesting geological story here and this is just a fantastic ride you know the road gets a little bit rougher in the sports mode we also feel that a little bit more but still pretty cool and again enough power although also we are going uphill all the time there is also this electric boost function from this small generator about 12 horsepower when I'm really throwing it out but I mean it's not that you would directly realize it now also this recuperation function that is possible also not that you directly realize that soon after this dynamic part we also take this car out a little bit more on you know, some more calmer roads and more everyday driving life experience and so on so I can tell you more about that at the moment rather the fun edge driving and is there any difference the Q3 and Q3 Sport pick as for that? Mm, not really, it depends on the um, suspension you pick that's you know making most difference. Wow, look at you know I can really just you know when it's 90 degrees corner I need to turn the steering wheel 90 degrees that's fantastic so what a great driving experience here so much fun to drive this car and I mean it's a still yes it's a premium car and it's not cheap at all but still segment wise and if you think about other premium vehicles which are way more expensive this one is still one you can use everyday driving life as for the flexibility you have and it's really a lot of fun so good suspension feedback nice steering this is really a very flawless experience the sport seats are also keeping us tight. It's good that we have a little bit more support. It would be even better if those were the, um, you know, the, the, the fabric or Alcantara services because here on the animal skin you slide around a little bit more. Wow. I, I could keep you on camera here, guys, all day, on, especially on those beautiful roads here. I hope you're really enjoying that together with me as we do. Olga, how are you feeling? Yeah, fine. Are you guys good? That's always a good sign and always asking my co-driver. And you know, we always always uh, call, call uh, the guy next to me co-driver because that's, that's rally style, you know? So yeah, way to go. So much fun here. I, I, did, I wouldn't have expected it in a, in a you know, Q3 SUV. Um, I mean, yes, we have driven the Q3 SUV before and here the Sportback, um, again, similar. 
of course you maybe somehow feel a little bit sportier because you just know like from the you know design exterior wise and yes the roof line is a little bit lower so maybe that's a very subtle subjective feeling that accounts for that and of course wow this turbo blue i mean when you look at that in the you see it in the mirrors when you look to the front on the front hood you see that it has this turbo blue, blue color or oh, maybe this screen is flickering by the way in the camera i'm not sure put that off now so i um, mean it's not flickering in real life again um this one is just flickering on camera then maybe wow by the way the brakes now so nine going from 90 to 60 not really hammering it through but just that was already 40 so good braking performance even downhill and again this car gives you such a controlled handling experience we know the platform already from the volkswagen ag it is very well known but it really gives you a great balance and well if you have an all-wheel drive version of the q3 or q3 sportback also doesn't change too much it's more that you know the, the higher horsepower figures are usually combined then with automatic gearbox and all-wheel drive and the lower horsepower figures are not and then it's a front-wheel drive platform of course um, this doesn't make the biggest difference um, when, when it's maybe slippery on winter times you might need an all-wheel drive version but that shouldn't be the main deciding factor when doing your pur purchase this 1.5 definitely interesting with the new m -Hef technology and also sufficient power of course doesn't mean that you have to go for this one not for the two liter one but sticking with the little bit smaller and it also saves you some money in the entry price so i think you know in this turbo blue exterior with the 1.5 petrol that should be a pretty decent pick for this car you know against some slalom <laughs> all guys like wang, wang. but i mean it's still quite okay you know especially in dynamic mode if we would compare that here to the normal auto mode for example let's see how that one plays out yeah, maybe shakes a little bit more but still even in the normal auto mode you can drive this vehicle very well also in a dynamic fashion so the first sporty dynamic impression here from driving i mean also for the segment it's fantastic and i would even say that this is you know definitely segment leading um, maybe together with one or two other cars or so on uh, we had a great driving experience in the bmw x2 m uh, m35i yeah that's a little bit complicated as for name that was also pretty amazing as for driving experience for example so you should also check out that review definitely so the x2 was also great in driving especially also with the adaptive suspension they are even uh, more that the sport pure sport suspension is too stiff but here again such a flawless experience with this vehicle i feel always safe yeah holger feels safe and that's of course as a co-driver the most important thing uh, i mean i can always hold onto the steering wheel i know where the road is going i feel it before and when the co-driver feels safe then that's an even better sign welcome to the motorway blind spot monitor here see when i'm using the turning indicator it was also flashing of course you know they have the light when the car is approaching from the rear on the blind spot and then even more flashing when you hit the turning indicator so it's a definite definitely good safety feature and would also be one of my favorites from this option list control it once more you know again just flashes constantly and as soon as i would put the turning yeah a little bit too late now when i, when I put the turning indicator then it's like flashing very fastly now to some everyday driving situations so here at the moment i'll accelerate out to 100 kilometers and then i also set the cruise control see it's separate stalk column left next to the steering wheel at 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour sound insulation is quite decent so it remains very calm and silent the adaptive suspension is doing a great job of you know really keeping this car steady so it's sport enough but at the same time very comfortable if you would go here to the sports mode then you would have actually less comfort feel some damages in the road a little bit more and so on the sports mode definitely was more helpful in those winding corners earlier here just keep it with the auto or comfort 
so that's definitely cozy. And what's also cool when you set the cruise control and also have the lane assistant activated, so this is the highest build we have here for that, it feels very natural. There's not much annoying intervention. We sometimes have those situations where you have very annoying intervention by those lane assist systems, but not the case here. And if I tend to run off the road here, see here, car is very smoothly keeping me in the lane. Don't try this at home, kids, please. So just demo purposes here. So that was a very smooth re um, reaction, better than a braking intervention like we know from some Mercedes models. And wow, really impressive. Traffic sign recognition also. Then the ACC can also adapt to that, for example. Let's see if the ACC does it now, but uh, maybe it's not the highest build as for that. But overall, very convincing as for the assistant systems. Now it's showing me 70 and there's also the next speed camera approaching. And what's also very interesting, since we have those you know, new mild hybrid systems that are evolving, this one here, the m half in the 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine, let's go to the efficiency mode because that makes it easier for us to trigger that mode. It does not work really when, when being in the cruise control mode. So you have to go out of the cruise control with short braking maneuver or something. Put it a little bit bigger and then when I'm here then in the efficiency mode and then I let off the throttle. I see the RPM drops to zero. So just rolling and coasting now and this can save some fuel but of course only when it makes sense. Yeah when I want to keep the speed anyways it doesn't make any sense but if you see like oh like ahead there there's like a traffic um, jam coming or something or I'm going down it for a longer time and I don't want to increase the speed really. Well now maybe it could be a situation so it runs between 40 and 160 kilometers for this um, you know, M have coasting here, for example, now I see this new traffic sign. We're also going downhill. I don't need any acceleration then. You can, and this M have system then, the small battery, keeps all the electric consumers running. And those cars are rolling computers, meanwhile, they need a lot of electricity for whatever, you know, also AC and so on. So this is um, an interesting solution. It does save 0.5 liters on more kilometers on paper. Will it have the very same effect in, dry, in the real driving life? Not so sure about that. But what we can say is that the overall fuel consumption is somewhat decent here. Maybe because of the system, maybe not, because, or maybe because the engine itself is quite efficient. About six liters and one kilometers. And when you are then in those, you know, about 40 mpg range, this is actually quite good for a car of that size and the weight and the flexibility and so on. So actually quite satisfied with that. And I think then it also doesn't make sense to go for uh, the more expensive diesel. Um, maybe depends on the market, yes, but I think this fuel consumption is low enough then, especially then here with the new MF system, which is exclusive so far in the Q3 and Q3 Sportback with the 1.5 turbo. Very interesting. And then, of course, you also have this over boost or special boost function to a horse pause for about 10 seconds. We can try that once more here, for example. We go back to the dynamic mode and then there's also a gear lower of course we could also gear, take an even lower gear for example but let's see how the kick down works here from 50 to 100 that's it yeah maybe i was a little bit too early because the instruments were lagging a little bit behind but yeah, it almost came close. So 50 to 100 and still quite decent. So of course you don't have like a super big acceleration or something because it's a small engine, but still totally sufficient as for the power for this one. The steering here is again quite progressive as I told you in the more agile driving part. And indeed it proves my point also this, this vehicle is something for every situation, you know, it's not too big. You can still use it in the city for finding some parking spots. It's not too small, you can still fit, you know, luggage inside, even here in the sport bag version, where you just have a little bit less leg room. It drives definitely similar Q3 and Q3 sport bag. There's no big difference. It's the same wheelbase. It's more about suspension you pick and this adaptive suspension. Um, definitely a recommendation if you have the extra money for that. Otherwise, stay with a base suspension because the sport suspension is too stiff for everyday driving life. In, unless you really, really want that. 
wheels. I do feel we have the biggest wheels mounted here. So if you want more comfort, go for smaller wheels. So the question and visuals on the outside and the comfort you have then on the inside. So the adaptive suspension is evening, evening that out a little bit, yes. But again, you will have more comfort if you go for some smaller wheels, definitely. But overall, I mean, you're just also in a normal mode. Good slalom character for this vehicle. It just feels agile at any time and comfortable enough at any time. So this is a great compromise as for this one. Here and in the auto mode, you see we, we, we don't drop in the RPMs, but as soon as I go to the efficiency mode and let the car roll or something, um, you know, in a very braking maneuver, but usually in the efficiency mode, that drops into zero and you can just use this rolling or coasting function. So you can definitely play around with those driving modes. Yeah. So, you know, very convincing in all the different aspects. Um, also how the ACC acts again. Um, and of course, also, you know, with the uh, blind spot monitor, of course, which, you know, is appearing then here in the mirror. So uh, very good assistance systems available also for this car. And now as a comparison, the SOFA top petrol engine for this normal Q3 or Q3 Sportback lineup, the 45 TFSI, this one's a two liter turbo petrol engine, here then with 230 horsepower and all way drive. So the one we've driven before, less displacement, but with the MHEF, with this, you know, electric boost and also with the, you know, better rec um, little bit of recuperation, better sailing coasting function, and front wheel drive and this one then all wheel drive and more power under the hood. So all wheel drive will make sense again in let's say harsh conditions or so, alpine regions. Um, other than that you can also just live with the front wheel drive. This car will never have any rear wheel bias even in this all wheel drive. It's front plus rear on demand so when you have it you know, like steady, slow speeds and so on it will still be most front wheel based here even in the all-wheel drive version, then the more you apply the throttle, the more power will be transported to the rear wheels. And we can also show you some acceleration difference here. We can go to the like, dynamic mode. And we're also in this S-shifting mode. And we accelerate now from 80 to 120. Oh, that's it. So yes, that definitely goes quicker here in this one. So you definitely have more power. No wonder about that. However, I have to say, we also had a lot of fun with the smaller engine because the main fan, fun factor about this car here is actually the agility in driving. And that's the same setup here today for both cars, 20 inch wheels together with the adaptive suspension. Again, me and also some colleagues here on location, we were you know, pretty much agreeing that 18 or 19 inch is still a good compromise. You have great visual and I would probably go to for 18 inch. You have more comfort, but still nice visual. And if you want better visual than 19 inch, it's still a little bit more comfort than those 20 inch wheels. Yeah, but, and I think this 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine was very interesting to drive as well. Here now, of course, on the motorway, when you have some acceleration time and possibility, you're also at higher. Sounds a little bit more aggressive also. Yeah, just, you know, you're definitely way quicker on the motorway. In the city, it won't play such a big role between those two engines, but definitely here on the motorway. So if you're driving on the motorway frequently and have also some, you know, frequent overtaking maneuvers, then this 2 liter TFSI, especially in the top houseboard spec, will have an advantage for you. But you've also seen that it still works with a smaller engine because you can use that turbo. And together with the MHEF system, you can especially save some fuel if you rather keep it steady. So we have driven this one here already in the normal Q3 and scored some fuel consumption of about nine liters in one kilometers. I'll reset it here now and see what we can score when we keep it steady here at cruise control at about 120 kilometers an hour another cruise control test here as well. So that system is working really very nicely. By the way, controlling the mirrors here with the electric functions also flawlessly done. That's pretty cool. 
AEB, the Autonomous Emergency Brake, is standard equipment with this car, and then the ACC and also the Blind Spot Monitor, that's an option. So if you just let it roll here on the motorway, then you can also score some very you know, quite low consumption figures, but not as low as with the other smaller engine. And then again, the consumption will raise if you hammer it a little bit more. So the question is then, do you want to pay more money for the more powerful engine and you will pay more money in the long run because of the higher fuel consumption? Here at the moment, yeah, still about, you know, about eight liters or more kilometers, although I have reset it and set cruise control. So we definitely see a significant difference in the fuel consumption figure. It really depends on the use. For most usages, I think I would recommend this new MF engine it was pretty cool and we also had it now at the very early stage, definitely. I really have to say I, I, I like the blue Alcantara here I mentioned earlier and it brings some joy in the interior. I was thinking a little bit about the contrast definitely to the all black interior. I would have found it a little bit more beautiful if they would use some grey colors that it's not that harsh for contrast and grey is fits better to blue than black to blue, I think. But other than that, I think it brings a lot of joy. So maybe, yeah. Why not? Yeah, I think, I think the consumption won't drop below that, so very interesting. There's such a significant difference. Sometimes those bigger displacement engines are not necessarily worse as for the fuel consumption, but in this case, that's really the case. So, and now back to our motorway ride with a little bit more power. So we see once more the, here the, Use the turning indicator and then also flashes. So, again, what a convincing ride from both engines, definitely. But the 1.5, definitely the more interesting engine today, I think. Now, a little bit higher speed, and didn't talk about the fuel uh, and the noise insulation when we are at really high speeds. And now let's pick it up a little bit, and we are now at 150 kilometers now, approximately. And that's still decently silent. Um, I mean, it's an SUV, so you stand a little bit against the wind, but it's still in a, you know, in a good level. It's not what I would say it's the most silent ride ever, but considering we are about 150 kilometers an hour now, I think that's, that's quite acceptable. So, what do you think? Which engine would you actually go for? Here now, I mean, you're at higher speeds and then you hit the throttle and there's still something coming. Yeah, so if you're a high-speed junkie, then of course this one will play an effect for you. Other than that, I think for the majority of customers, the 1.5 will be a very interesting choice. And now to our conclusion for today with the Audi Q3 Sportback. Exterior design, yes, definitely sportier than the normal Q3. And also inside this segment, a really sporty and likable design. So with this little bit flatter roofline and so on, and especially here in the S-line and those big wheels, it looks really sporty. Always have to think about that the bigger wheels, of course, cost you some comfort. But overall, especially with the adaptive suspension, such a smooth ride, both very comfortable and very even very surprisingly sporty here in those winding corners. So just a flawless job in the driving part among the best in segment. Interior also with the high quality. There are also non-animal skin choices available which are also doing a great job. So you have a choice right here. Also interesting Alcantara accentuations. Little bit more daring this interior concept. You lose a little bit of practicability if you compare it to the normal Q3. It's a little bit less legroom, but still it's a quite versatile car overall. If you see that, you can still use it as a primary vehicle in your everyday driving life. So that still works very well. Well, and then overall about this m half system here, the turbo petrol engine. Yeah, you can get it low to six liters or more kilometers. That's good. And if you like really hammer it in those winding corners, we got maximum of about nine liters. But still, that's a very acceptable figure than at least the lower one of course. So a very interesting concept and a car where you know most people can do something with. Not too big, not too small, comfortable enough, surprisingly sporty. Yeah, so overall very good rating we can give here about the Audi Q3 Sportback. I hope you really enjoyed this episode here today and you know as always with most of the Audi cars, yeah, when it comes to pricing 
that's definitely the biggest downside. So what's your take? What's your feedback? Please leave me in the comments and also join us next time.